Hey everyone, hope you're doing alright. It's been a long time since I uploaded something, I know. So I thought that today we could watch this video that I've just found on the BBC website, kind of react to it together. I don't know exactly what's going to be said in it yet, but I've got a pretty good idea because this has been cropping up again and again lately in the news. For those of you who don't know, it's um, basically what's happened in the UK there is a shortage of slaughterhouse workers at the moment because of Brexit and uh, what that's meant is that a lot of animal farmers, mostly pig farmers so far, <clears throat> they're not able to sell the pigs uh, sort of into the food chain as it's called because there's not the workers to kill them and they're also in the situation where they can't just kind of wait a couple of months and then sell the pigs to be killed you know when there's more workers available because by that point they'll be too big and that's because pretty much all well most of the flesh that people buy and consume here in the UK uh, it's from supermarkets and shops like that so they want the cuts of meat a specific size to fit in their packaging so the farmers can't sell the animals now they can't sell them in a few months because they will be too big if they let them grow to be a little bit older. So they're just having to kill them at a loss, basically. And uh, they keep coming on the news and acting like they're the victims in this somehow. So I think that's what this is. Let's take a look together. We needed help three weeks ago, months ago. The time scale is so, so critical. People are killing pigs now. We... Okay, people are killing pigs constantly. It's about one and a half billion pigs that are killed globally every year uh, for things like ham and, and bacon and sausages and things like that. So, Personally, are weeks away from having to make this horrendous choice and it will destroy us. Yeah, so I agree. It's a horrendous choice, as she, uh, as she I can't speak, as she said, uh, to basically murder all of these innocent, young, healthy animals, these sentient beings, but she only thinks it's a horrendous choice because, like she said, it will destroy us. She only cares about the, the finances involved. She doesn't care about the animals, so it's kind of gross. There's people starving in this country, in the world, and our government are prepared to let us throw healthy protein into the bin, and that is criminal. Wow, okay, there was a bit to unpack there, so at first, um, she said there's people starving in the world. I mean, yeah, that's true. What I find ironic about her as a pig farmer saying that uh, pigs are, are fed on crops. In fact, more than a third, quite a bit more than a third of the crops that we grow are fed to animals that we have bred to be killed. So if she wants to talk about people starving, that's because our food system is so inefficient. I mean, that's not the only reason, but that's obviously a big factor. So if we weren't breeding these animals and then having to grow all these crops to feed these animals before we just kill them anyway, uh, there would be a lot less starving people. And then what was the second thing? She's, oh yeah, she said healthy protein. <clears throat> so pig flesh, it's well known that it's carcinogenic. And in fact, it, it's been shown that even like consuming it quite infrequently, um, and you know in small amounts when it's when it's processed when it's like bacon or ham that's gonna lead to quite a sharp uh, rise in your risk of developing cancers like colon cancer and I mean as well as that uh, but you know animal products especially like pig products it's high in um, cholesterol it's high in saturated fat so if you eat these foods a lot your chances of developing other diseases like uh, heart disease or, or developing diabetes, those are going to go up as well. So healthy protein, I think just stick with some chickpeas or something would be better. You don't get the abattoir staff that are needed to humanely slaughter your pigs. Okay, <laughs> sorry I keep pausing, but so much is being said. So what she means by humanely slaughter your pigs. Here in the UK, the majority of pigs are stunned before they have their throat slit in a CO2 gas chamber. Um, so that's what she means when she says humane slaughter there. In the CO2 gas chamber, the pigs are, well, they, they suffer tremendously. It can take 
up to a couple of minutes for a pig to pass out in there before they fall out and, and have their throat slit and have their blood drained. Um, it will vary on how long it takes them to pass out based on the concentration of gas that's used. But during that time, they will be terrified and panicking because of the sensation of not being able to breathe properly. And as well as that, they'll, they'll be suffering tremendously in, in pain as the CO2 sort of enters uh, their mouth and their eyes and any of their nasal passages and makes contact with all of the liquids there, it's going to turn into carbonic acid and cause like a really strong burning sensation. So it's well known that uh, CO2 stunning, it's a torturous, torturous method of uh, stunning uh, a pig or, or, or any animal really. The only reason it's done um, is so, so much so much more than electrocution or bolt guns, which are also messy and horrible, is because it's it's so much more efficient and cheaper. Um, it speeds up processing, as, as they call it, of these animals, and the workers don't need to be involved as much with, with the gassing, so um, there's less kind of room for, for like human error there as well. It just it saves them money, it speeds up the slaughter lines, it's that's what they mean when they say humane slaughter. Does that mean you will have to kill them? Yes, we are juggling and doing everything in our power to not get to that situation. But emotionally, physically, financially, we are in the worst position that UK agriculture has ever found itself. Oh, boo-hoo, listen to her, like, just moaning about me, 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 when, uh, literally, this story we're talking about, it's estimated to be thousands, over a hundred thousand, the last estimate I saw, pigs that are going to be uh, just murdered, incinerated, and just thrown away like healthy young pigs, and look at her just <laughs> playing the victim in all of this. It's insane. And the government could help us, and they are not even talking to us. The supply chain's not talking to us. Nobody is talking to the farmer. If you do not want a British pig producer, then that is fine. We will stop what we... Please do. Yeah, please do. You're doing, but you need to accept that you will have lower welfare for pork on your plate. That yeah, that's bold of you to assume that I'll have any pork on my plate. I've actually grown out of abusing animals for food and stuff like that, so. It doesn't meet the standards that we meet. The government have said that these shortages are the, quote, stresses and strains as the UK moves towards the government's aim of what they call a high wage, high skilled, high productivity economy, and that you're addicted to cheap foreign labor and you've got to pay more to people to get British people to do these jobs. What do you say to that? I say, Boris Johnson, come and see me. Come and see my firm. Come and talk to my people that I employ because I play them really well. I look after them as does Sorry, that made me laugh because um, farmers also like to say how they look after their animals, don't they? So I, I hope she looks after her staff, her employees, a bit better than she looks after her pigs. Because I wouldn't like to think that when it comes time for them to be fired, they end up having their heads chopped off and get shat down someone's toilet. Every farmer on this, in this country, come and see us and have this conversation face to face because we are dire. This is desperate. This is not our fight. This is the processor's fight. Come and speak to me, Boris Johnson. Have the guts to stand up and talk to us. Um, vegan sausage rolls.